Hello and welcome to Cardiology 101. This is Dr. Shiraz and today we are going to discuss some ECGs of inferior wall MI. So first of all, let us look at the leads that we should be looking when we uh, describe inferior wall MI. We know the inferior leads are lead 2, lead 3, lead AVF and the reciprocal leads which show the reciprocal depression of inferior wall STEMI are lead 1 and lead AVL. So this is our first ECG and let's just start looking at lead V1. We see some uh, ST segment depression in lead 1 and the, uh, then the contagious lead for lead 1 is lead AVL and we also see some ST segment depression in lead AVL. Then we start seeing ST segment elevation in lead 2, lead 3, lead AVF. These are our inferior leads. Okay. Then again we have ST segment elevation in lead 2. And lead V1 to V6 is almost normal. There is no ST segment depression or elevation in anterior leads. So this is ECG of inferior wall STEMI in which we have ST segment elevation in lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF and we have reciprocal depressions in lead 1 and lead AVL. So uh, a disclaimer here. So whenever you label an ECG of ST segment elevation of inferior leads you should always describe whether it is accompanying RV infarct or not. So whenever we say this is inferior wall MI, we also say with RV infarct or without RV infarct. So what is RV infarct? We know that RCA, which is supplying the inferior wall of heart, also supplies the right ventricle of heart. So if so, with inferior wall MI, we also see RV infarct or right ventricular infarct. So it is very important for us to describe what is RV infarct. We will discuss RV infarct in the later ECGs. So again, we have this uh, other ECG in lead 1. We have ST segment depression. In lead AVL, we have ST segment depression. We have elevation in lead 2 and lead 3. All right. And lead AVF. We have ST segment elevation in lead AVF. Then we have small elevation in lead V1 and lead V2. The rest of ECG is normal. So let's just discuss what is the criteria for labeling RV infarct. So there are three criteria on which we can label RV infarct on our standard ECG, which is the elevation in lead 3. All right. Our elevation in lead 3 should be more than elevation in lead 2 all right we have elevation in lead 2 and lead 3 but we can see that the elevation here in lead 3 is more almost five small blocks compared to elevation in lead 2 which is almost three small blocks so our first criteria is fulfilled which is our elevation in lead 3 should be more than elevation in lead v2 next criteria is that we should we should have elevation in lead v1 because you know the lead V1 is placed on the right side of the heart or the right side of the sternum. So this is the lead which is almost in line with the RV or the left right ventricle. So elevation of V1 describes RV infarct. Our next criteria is that our V2 should show ST segment depression. But we see we are not fulfilling this criteria here. What do we do? When we finally see our two or three criteria being fulfilled, we do the RV leads, the right ventricular leads. Uh, how do we do that? We just reverse the leads that we put on the precordium. For example, if V1 was on the right side of sternum, we put V1 on the left side of the sternum. We start putting V2 on the right side of sternum. V3, V4, V5, V6 become on the right side instead of being on the left side as in our standard ECG. So the leads or the ECG we obtain by that method is called RV leads ECG. All right. And we have here our uh, lead one which shows ST segment depression. Lead AVL shows ST segment depression but lead two, lead three and lead AVF show ST segment elevation. Again, I want to look at uh, I want you to look at lead 3 which has more ST segment elevation compared to the ST segment elevation in lead 2. Alright, our first criteria of RV infarct is being fulfilled. 
our next criteria was either v1 should be isoelectric or elevated it is isoelectric so our second criteria is being fulfilled our third criteria was v2 should have st segment depression there's another interesting thing in this you know 80 percent of the types our heart is right dominant what what do we mean by right dominant heart is when the posterior coronary artery is being supplied by the rca so if we have infarct of rca or occlusion of rca which supplies the inferior wall of the heart we can also see some infarct of the posterior wall so the shelf like depressions like this like this like this these are called shelf like depressions these signify our posterior wall mi i will discuss posterior wall in the upcoming video but for now you just look at this ecg and remember this is an ecg of inferior wall mi accompanying posterior wall mi and also with rv infarct of course we will conduct a rv lead ecg to confirm our diagnosis these are our rv infarct you know we have put r in front of v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and v6 these are our right sided leads or rv leads ecg how do we do that i told you that we reverse the ecg leads so we start seeing elevation from v3 to v6 this confirm our diagnosis of right ventricular infarct what is the importance of rv infarct you know that the function of right ventricle is to pump blood to the left ventricle to go through the lungs first and then to go to left ventricle so it is the chamber of heart which provides the left ventricle with preload so for example if we have infarct of our right ventricular what we have is we have our diastolic dysfunction so in this case i i want you to focus on this point in this case of right ventricular infarct we do not give the vasodilators because vasodilators what do we what do they do they pull the blood in the periphery so uh, our preload decreases so in the case of diastolic dysfunction where we already have decreased preload if we put patient on vasodilators for example nitrates what happens is we, we put the patient into cardiogenic shock all right so it is contraindicated in the case of right ventricular infarct to put patient on vasodilators so that's why it is so important to describe right ventricular infarct in the case of inferior wall STEMI that di the diagnosis of inferior wall STEMI would always be incomplete without describing whether it is with RV infarct or without RV infarct so here we have a uh, interesting ECG remember we discussed our tombstone appearance when describing interior wall MI we have another sign here called dead man sign in case of inferior wall MI so what happens is sometimes the elevation in lead AVF are so high that they collide with the reciprocal depression in lead AVL so our ST segment elevation in lead AVF are so high that they collide with the reciprocal depression of AVL and we have this sign over here which just looks as a dead body lying on the crown a dead man lying on the ground this is called our dead man sign we can almost see it here too and here it is more prominent with AVL and AVF so what does this signify it signifies that the myocardium has been infarcted so much that this patient is on increased risk of dying all right so i think this will cover your concept of inferior wall mi if you have any question for me comment it down and i will see you in the next video thank you